Good afternoon, friends. I have breaking news to share with you today. The United States is expected to see a surge in retirements, with more Americans reaching retirement age more than ever before. But this could lead to Social Security benefit cuts, and lawmakers are holding important discussions on the future of Social Security. Please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also. This coming Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. I was recently asked if Prove It would lead to EPA implementing a carbon tax. Now. If that was the bill, I'd vote no, obviously. But thankfully, it's not the bill. But there's a lot of things wrong with that preposition, supposition. First of all, the EPA isn't tasked with this study, and neither this committee or that agency handles tax policy. But it's indicative of the noise that surrounds the actual substance of the legislation. So I want to reiterate what's in the bill first. Contrary to the ranking member's comments about this bill being a quote road to a carbon tax, I want to read the actual text w regarding, by the way, authorities which aren't fuzzy, and prohibition prohibitions which are clear as can be. Quote: Nothing in this act provides any new authority to any federal agency to impose, collect, or enforce a greenhouse gas emissions tax, fee, duty, price, or charge. Right, so nothing from any nothing empowers any agency to do any of these things. If it were a tax, it would be in Chairman Carper's other committee, the Finance Committee, as I said earlier. I think it goes without saying, but you'd be hard pressed to find two states more opposed to a carbon tax than West Virginia and North Dakota. Believe me, um, and I've got a long record of opposing a carbon tax. So the, this insinuation. Uh, that I'd be pushing a tax on any of our manufacturers and producers is, well, it's laughable. But even if you were trying to correlate Prove It to a carbon tax, I want to read something that supporters of a carbon tax have said about Prove It. They've said, quote, a domestic carbon fee would be applied on fuels when they enter the economy. The Prove It Act is an analysis of average product level emissions intensity data. This data is irrelevant in implementing a U.S. carbon fee. End quote. That's advocates of, of a carbon fee. I'm, I'm starting to talk the people on the other side here out of this, I'm afraid. Similarly, <laughs> similarly, I better be careful. <laughs> there, there, there is support for some sort of carbon tariff to level the playing field for American workers while punishing polluting countries like China and Russia that undercut them. But again, that's not today's bill. And if it were, it'd be in the Finance Committee. But I find it concerning, concerning that some keep talking about carbon board adjustment as if it's theoretical. In fact, I think one of the things that the ranking member said is that some people say that this is for, prove it is to accommodate, accommodate a European Union's carbon tax. It's not to accommodate it, it's to defend against it. The EU is already collecting data to implement their CBAM in 2026, and the United Kingdom has announced theirs will go into effect one year later. So this is not theoretical. This is real. These are our closest allies that are preparing a tax, a tariff against products manufactured in the United States. Multiple American products will be charged a tariff based on math that the Europeans use, and they're going to do. They're going to use it to us, use it on us, not to help us. Prove it is an opportunity to make sure we collect our own data, rather than subject ourselves to whatever Europe hits us with. Now, I don't want the steel, aluminum, hydrogen, and fertilizer producers that we represent to be hit by a European tariff without us having the data to rebut it. The United States is set to experience an unprecedented increase in retirements, with an estimated 11,000 Americans reaching the age of 65 each day until December 2024. According to Yahoo News, this trend is often referred to as peak 65. It is projected to continue through the year 2027, involving approximately 4.1 million individuals, making it the largest wave of retirement age Americans in U.S. history. 
For those entering retirement around this time, it is essential to be aware of certain key factors. Elizabeth O'Brien, a personal finance expert, has highlighted the significance of turning 65. This age marks eligibility for Medicare, a crucial consideration unless an individual is still employed with health insurance coverage. O'Brien recommends enrolling in Medicare Part A, which covers hospital insurance, even if one is still working, as it doesn't involve premiums. Medicare Part B, covering medical services, becomes more nuance-based on employment situations. According to Yahoo News, late enrollment penalties for both Medicare Parts A and B exist, with Part B penalties being especially significant and permanent. O'Brien emphasizes the importance of avoiding these penalties by enrolling during the specified window around an individual's 65th birthday. Beyond healthcare decisions, financial considerations come into play at 65, including choices regarding retirement and managing assets like 401ks. For those ready to retire, but seeking continued engagement, semi-retirement or part-time work is suggested. O'Brien advises individuals to start saving for retirement early, underscoring the impact of compound interest. While Social Security is expected to be available for younger generations, many experts have warned that potential reduction in benefits may occur due to trust fund depletion by 2033 unless legislative action is taken. The U.S. House Budget Committee is facing heat for passing a bill to establish a bipartisan fiscal commission that aims to solve the federal government's budget problem. But it didn't take long for Social Security advocates and a few Democrats to push back against the bill out of fear it may lead to cuts to the programs like Social Security. Also, friends, according to Business Insider, companies are in a record-setting debt binge. The London Stock Exchange Group has released data that shows that investment-grade firms have issued $153 billion in bonds since the start of the year. That is the most debt issued in 30 years. The rush of the deal-making in the bond market comes as investors push for higher yielding before the Federal Reserve starts slashing interest rates. This could be happening as soon as this quarter. Meanwhile, borrowing costs for companies have fallen since the end of last year. Together, the increased demand and relatively lower costs for companies has led to a boom in new issuance to the start of 2024. The yield on investment, grade corporate bonds, have hovered around 5.3% last week. Meanwhile, the cost for bars to issue new bonds, which is measured by their cost relative to U.S. Treasuries, has fallen to its lowest level in about two years. The Fed is expected to soon cut interest rates, which could ultimately lower borrowing cost. But experts have said that it's possible that some companies want to get ahead of any economic bad news that could push yields back up. Business Insider has also said that the pace of corporate borrowing has been on the rise over the past decade. That is a trend some market experts have characterized as part of a growing public and private debt bubble. For some bars, signs of distress are already starting to build, with defaults of high-yield corporate bonds expected to notch $46 billion this year. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on the current state of our economy? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Well, my great and beautiful friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, my friends, so much for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends,
the greater your chances of winning these weekly giveaways.